You are the last church that I will serve, and you are also among the best of churches that I have served. My favorite professor said one time that the word nice is not a synonym for loving. And since I know that my time with you is shorter now than it was when I arrived, I hope you understand that the direct conversations I have had with you recently and today are because I have loved this place. And I have loved serving it. Sometimes I notice things by accident. I was looking back at some previous orders of worship to see what Pledge Sunday was like, and it made me realize that in your church's life, it has always been called Pledge Sunday. It made me realize that you take the fall and ask for pledges of money more than you ask for commitment to this place as your first commitment. This fall, I hope you've noticed that my intention is to speak about much more than your financial contribution. It is, because, it is because participation in this body of Christ is a commitment to the person you call Lord more than a contribution to a group that helps you with your spiritual life. In, fi- in Friday's pastor note, I quoted Merriam Webster's definition of the word commitment an agreement or pledge to do something in the future. It's half right. Pledge is a future tense word, and commitment is a present tense word. Commitment Sunday puts the question now of how much this congregation means to the core of your life, your values, your sense of meaning, and your purposes. I am present tense committed to you. I am your interim, and when you have a new pastor, I will be gone. So I hope that you realize that my commitment to you is about you and about your future and not about any of my own interests. By now you should know that I'm pretty straightforward. If you don't, you've been sleeping. One of the best compliments that I ever got in my ministry was a person who said that I was willing to say out loud what a lot of people were thinking. I think some of you, not all of you, are thinking that God will keep UPC going if you decide that someone else can do a job that you can do. That someone else is able to give more money than you are. Commitment is not about what someone else can do. Not about what we can do together. Commitment is not a plural word. It comes down to me and now. There are people in this congregation who've reached an age where they cannot do what they used to. That does not mean that their service is all in the past and you can retire from church. For you who are younger, being too busy with parenting and a job and a cell phone and whatever else it is, I hope you know that that's not a new thing. Just ask some older people what life was like when their children were growing up. Commitment means that you need to be doing something here that you can do. That is commitment. Jesus sat down one day and he talked to 5,000 people. But those people were not the people who changed the world. It was the people who did not even know what they were doing who wound up being the people that followed him because they were committed. For most of the fall, we have talked about first things, first place, first community, first service, first fruits, first witness, Today, it boils down to first commitment. This place has to be more important to you than some other places. It needs you more than other places do. 
The Christian life is not about what God can do for you, but what you can do for God that will change your life and make you realize that you don't need a lot of those other places. They are not making your life better, and this place is here to make your life and the world around you better. Sometime next year, and sooner than later, you will probably have a new pastor. Did I hear a sigh of relief? (laughs) But the future of this church does not depend on the pastor so much as what you do here, here and now, to support this church in the future of its ministry. It does not need your pledges about the future nearly as much as it needs your commitment today for its future. I've worked at this calling for 35 years now, and the biggest problems that I have seen in Presbyterian culture are three things. We talk a lot about the sovereignty of God, so we think that God has the power to keep the church going with our lesser commitments. The second thing is that people have the mistaken notion that if they don't want to do something that they have the gifts to do, someone else is going to do it. And if you have been thinking that, then the problem is the third issue. You have not been reading Scripture. In all my long years of serving the Presbyterian Church, I have found that the chief defect in our tradition is that people simply don't pay attention to the text. I think it's an avoidance thing or a denial thing. If we read the text, we would have to pay attention to it and do something about it. This is not about a Christian church or Christian beliefs or Christian community. It is about the Christian life that each one of us lives. I retired from congregational ministry for the first time at the end of 2016. And I thought I was done with my full-time part, my full-time part of work for the kingdom. I got a phone call that this church needed someone like me, and after I talked to their interim search committee, I went away thinking that I did not need a call from God. Common sense told me that there were three or four things that I could do to help you, and I could not think of a single reason, good reason, to say no. Like my dad said, sometimes, David, God's just telling you to use your head. That's why he gave you one. I could see that you are one of the few churches that has a chance to make a difference in your community in the 21st century. And I knew then, and I know thou, that it is not up to me. It is up to you. Today is the day, in the present tense, that you need to make a commitment to this place first and foremost in your time and talent and money. If it is to thrive in the next season with a new pastor, you cannot be content to be a place that just rocks along in happiness and harmony. If you do that, you may not be here in 30 years. I know I'm taking a huge risk to be plain spoken with you, but I see more promise in this congregation than most all of the congregations I have served as a faithful Presbyterian teaching elder. I chose this denomination. Presbyterians have the best structure and focus when we remember what the main thing is. I committed to its future in the face of the peril that I know the modern world is putting on it. You are here because you know that this place is not like most of the other places. You are a really good church. And you could become a great church. What Christ has given you, 
is worth your commitment. So I want to read the lesson again. Paul speaks to us. So here is what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for God. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what God wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to the level of immaturity, God brings out the best in you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Amen.